Hello YouTube, welcome back to Stagey Bookish. Today we're going to talk about my favourite, some of my favourite books of 2019 so far. Are you ready? Let's talk books! everybody welcome back to stagey bookish my name is olivia i hope you're very very well as i said in my introduction today we are going to just i'm going to share with you some of my favorite books of 2019 so far before i start on this list excuse me let me just preface a few things these are some of my favorite books of 2019 so far these are not all because some of them are ebooks and some of them have returned to the library so i haven't got my hands on them all so this is my selection of top books from this year um there is a range here there is some that have been released in 2019 there's some that have been released in other years but the, the key thing is with these i have read all of these this year okay I'll be ready to start with this. And also, these are in no particular order either. So, okay, are you ready? Which one should we pick up first? I have got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six here and I've got a seventh one I definitely need to mention. So let's pick up this one first. The Love and Lies of Roxana Ali by Sabina Khan. Um, this was a striking read for me. Essentially, the gist of the plot, without giving too much away, our main character, uh, Roxana Ali, is a lesbian, and she has for a while been in a secret relationship with a girlfriend um, against uh, her faith and her kind of parents' wishes, and it's got very much a secret relationship. Unfortunately, one day, um, she gets discovered, and her family kind of resolved there's no other thing to do to tr than to take her away to uh, India to Pakistan and to force her to get married what I liked about this book for someone with me a lot of the students I work with and have worked with in the past are from Muslim cultures and although I'm not I am no authority on saying whether this is accurate I think for me the idea of tradition versus non-tradition and kind of the roles and the expectations of girls within this culture was a really interesting read for me um what I found fascinating or what I found a bit disturbing at times was the treatment that Roxana had to go through when she got sent away in order to you know to get rid of this tox from her this kind of the lesbian side of it um but what I also respected a lot that, that this was very much a story of being who you want to be and being true to yourself and just hoping that really the people that you love will respect you in that fact and i really really enjoyed that about this i'd highly recommend this as a read it's not a very long read um it is if my memory serves me correctly just over 330 pages but i remember reading this i read this in a day it absolutely flies by so this is number one of one of my favorite books of the year so far let's carry on uh let me do the honourable shout outs for the books I do not have in front of me to start with. Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. If you've heard the hype on book, this has been the book of BookTube 2019 so far. But trust me, having read it just a couple of weeks ago, it is all true. It is all worth it. And be prepared to sob and cry and laugh and just everything. Alex and Henry, you've got the... Alex is the son, the first son. So he's the son of the pre president of the United States. Henry is the prince of England. They have this love-hate relationship, which quite obviously turns into the romantic kind and it is again a bit like Roxana Ali that element of being accepted for who you are and not letting your personal life have an influence on how people see you or people not judging you because of your personal life there was a lot of politics in it which I I don't follow politics really and I just didn't struggle to get my head around it at all but what I loved about Red White and Royal Blue was that it was so pure and so wonderful and Alex and Henry I just wanted to get them and protect them at all costs um so that is definitely on one of my top book reads of the year so far the other one which I don't have with me because someone borrowed it and hasn't returned it not happy um it's truly devious by Maureen Johnson it is the first in a trilogy the second book has already come out which is The Vanishing Stare and the third book is due out the start of next year The Hand in the Wall um murder mystery i love my murder mystery books any kind of thing like that either old school or new school that goes back to my nan um when i was younger one of her things was you know we'd always watch these really old school detective dramas we're talking man from uncle we're talking Columbo. we're talking kojak we're talking ironside we're talking murder she wrote and i've always loved murder mystery stories and that 
translates with this. Um, Truly Dubious is about this uh, school in the uh, American mountains where people are chosen to go there based on their interest or strong ability for something. Stevie, who is our main character, is obsessed with true crime and she wants to go to this academy in order to solve the mystery of the murder of the wife and daughter of the founder and then throughout the story you run in, in kind of adjoining storylines that you'll see what Stevie is doing in the present but then actually you'll go back to the incident and find out what's happening there and you go back and forth back and forth and as the realizations start to come through I love the pace of it I love the character of Stevie the revelation at the end of Truly Devious was like a what? So I haven't picked up The Vanishing Stair yet. It's on my ongoing TBR, but I will be picking it up soon um, because I'm fascinated to see where Maureen Johnson takes this. I'm really, really fascinated. So yeah, Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Okay, as we continue on with a look at some of my favourite books of the year so far, um, let's pick up, I've got, I should say, I've got all the them lying here next to me, so I'm just picking up in any random order. Uh, this was one out of left field for me, Two Boys Kissing by David Leviathan, who is the co-author of Will Grace and Will Grace and with John Green. Um, I picked this up out of morbid curiosity, again, um, but it was just seems something that's in my thoughts. It's a nice short read. I'm interested. If I read you the blurb on the back, um, it might give you a taste of it if it's not one you've heard of before. The two boys kissing are Craig and Harry. They are hoping to set the world record for the longest kiss. They are not a couple, but they used to be. Peter and Neil are a couple. Their kisses are different. Avery and Ryan have only just met and are trying to figure out what happens next. Cooper is alone. He's not sure how he feels. As the marathon progresses, these boys, their friends and families, evaluate the changing nature of feelings, behaviour and this crazy little thing called love. And there's also a blurb on the back from Patrick Ness, who is like a writing god. Um, this is an emotional book. This broke me in any kind of ways. I think an additional thing... Uh, to know with this is that while the story does happen you also get interjections from the narrators who are set up as a Greek chorus and the Greek chorus is to represent all the kind of gay men that have died or been persecuted in the times before Craig and Harry are doing what they are doing to see the family reactions to see the reactions of their friends to see news and media reactions this just broke me but I've never ever read a book like it and it is one I would urge every single person out there to read. If you haven't picked this up, please pick this up. It is the kind of book that needs to, shows our world and what our world can be in the worst kind of light, but also in the best kind of light as well. Uh, again, really short read. It was 236 pages. Really, really easy read, but I cannot say enough. Please read this okay it's an important one it's an important message that gives in net in continuation i think it makes sense that we go for this one next what if it's us by becky albertelli and adam silvera so while day two boys kissing discusses kind of a, a lot of the issues this is the most heartwarming story ever i should say firstly becky albertelli was the one uh if you recognize her name who wrote the upside of her unrequited leah on the offbeat and simon versus the homo sapiens gender or the film Love, Simon, which is the book that got me back into reading in the ardent way that I do. Adam Silvera, oh, some of his books absolutely kill me as well. Um, but when, when I heard they were doing one together, I literally was dying for this book when it came out. I think it came out, I want to say back end of 2018. I read it in 2019. Um, but I've been dying to read this book. And my dear friend of mine, Michael, he read this before me and just sobbed and was like, you need to read it so we can discuss. And it's just so beautiful. Again, uh, Arthur and Ben. Arthur's only in New York for the summer. But if Broadway has taught him anything, it's that the universe can deliver a show-stopping romance when you least expect it. Ben thinks the universe needs to mind its own business. If it had its back, he wouldn't be carrying a box of his ex-boyfriend's things to the post office. But when they get to the post office, they both run into each other. And it's a case of what if... Is it love at first sight? What if it is us? What if that perfect love story is us? My stagey heart was also made stupidly happy by this book because they reference things like Hamilton. And I'm like... They are stagey and they are precious and they are beautiful and I love them and they warm my heart. Um, so this is one hell of a book to read as well if you want one. God, you said the theme with some of these. Let's go on to, let's go something more dramatic next. Right, Sky by Neil Shusterman. This is 
and I've said this in other videos, what I love about Neil Schusterman's writing is that he has the ability to create worlds and create characters that very realistically could live in the world we live in today. Obviously the world he creates is not our world, but actually it wouldn't take a lot for our world to be this world. And this world in particular is freaky as hell. Um, this is set in a future dystopian, dystopian world where there is no longer natural death. All diseases have been cured, all ailments have been cured. The only way that people die now is because of these people called the Skites, uh, who are chosen people who essentially are the only ones that can kill someone else. And it is an honour to be chosen to be a sky. Um, but you get our main characters in this, whose minds, names escape me, Citra, Citra and Rowan, who become part of the Skythedom and it's politics and it's power play and it's backstabbing and it's messy and it's action packed and it's just everything. The cliffhanger in this is beyond any kind of epic proportions. I also read the follow up to this this year, uh, Thunderhead, which again takes the story on a whole nother turn and the third book in the series, The Toll, which I am so dying for, I believe is at the start of November and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely here to see what happens with this world but if you want action if you want thriller this is the one for you okay now down to my last two favorite some of my favorite books of the year I've got to keep saying some because I'm going to just defy myself um let's pick this next one up Ah, oh, Tommy Adiemi's Children of Blood and Bone. This was, I believe, my second read of the year, my first fiction read of the year. This was one of those books in 2018 that was like, I should have read this last year, but I just didn't get time. And I was determined in 2019 to pick this up. And oh my God, I'm so glad I did. This, in, in a different way to Scythe, this is the action adventure film that we never know we needed this is so cinematic in its writing and so kind of epic and huge and wonderful but at the same time you feel indeed to the characters and you want them to do well and then this person's with that person and should they be with that person but what about that person and it just gets all chaotic but i love it um i think it says it all with the blood they killed my mother they took our magic they tried to bury us now we rise and i was like here <laughs> yeah um this is also being turned into a film. I know it's been optioned certainly for a film. I think I have that right, Tommy me. Um, and this, and it, it so works because it's such a cinematic film. The follow up to this, Children of Virtue and Vengeance, was meant to be out in March, because I was thinking, yes, read it in January, second one's out in March, I'm ready. Then it got pushed back to June. Then it got pushed back to December. And I'm like, um, so a definite reread is coming of this but if you haven't think how's the best way I can describe this book think Black Panther from the Marvel world Th think if Black Panther was a girl and had magic have that okay Black Panther was a girl and had magic Zelly is my, go my goddess so I'm here for her bring it into the last book of uh this video that I've really enjoyed. This was another one I came across uh, end of January, start of February. And one thing I should say, and if you don't know this about me already, you should. I am a Disney addict. I'm 34 years old and I am proud to say I'm a Disney addict. I mean, I'm sat on my bed filming this. I've got, look, I mean, look, I've got a Simba sat next to me on my bed while I'm filming this. I'm 34, I don't care. He's precious. You are never too old for Disney. If anyone tells you you are too old for Disney, get that negativity out of your life. You don't need that negativity in your life. Um, but I, I digress. Um, when I, the retellings are some of my favourite books to read and my favourite books to enjoy. Thus, when I heard that writer Bridget Kemmerer was taking on a Beauty and the Beast retelling, I was sold. And that retelling was a curse so dark and lonely. Firstly, can we just appreciate this damn cover? Modern retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Hey, hey, hey. I just love it. Uh, sublime, sublime. Fall in love, break the curse, break the curse, save the kingdom. And what what you have in this, you have Ren, Prince Ren and you have Harper, who are, if you like, the Beauty and the Beast-esque roles. It's not exactly like the story. It's a modern retelling, but they are those kind of roles, um, who are the main characters. Harper lives in our world and is kind of stolen away to this this kingdom of Emberfall, which is what Ren oversees. But obviously there is a beast lurking in the mist who scares the villagers that are left half to death. Ren has a, a right-hand man, Colonel Grey, Commander Grey. 
we stand grey on this channel and it is basically their epic of adventures in the style of Beauty and the Beast and kind of how they actually go um I loved it I swept through this book I absolutely swept through it and there were some parts that you know absolutely made me cry you have alternating chapters between Ren and Harper and sometimes Grey gets in there as well but this just killed killed my Disney heart in the best kind of way there was one chapter I think I want to see if I can find it I seem to remember there was one particular chapter I was like oh my god they are the exact words from the film and I was like oh. <laughs> I want to see if I can find it let me see if I, if I can't find it oh yeah chapter 52 I'm not going to say it Harper you came back I think that's the line that the beast used to bell in the film, but it just broke my dizzy heart. It made me so happy. Um, there, this is part of, I want to say a trilogy, I hope. Uh, the next book, A Heart So Fierce and Broken, January 2020. I am here for it. I am ready. If anyone out there has a copy of that arc and wants to talk, sit, talk to me, I would love you forever. You have no idea how much I want to read the follow-up to this book. Um, particularly, the cliffhanger and the epilogue in this book are... Ooh, you think you know Beauty and the Beast? Think again. That's all I'm going to say when it comes to this book. <laughs> um, that is it. They are just a sample of my top books of 2019 so far. I'd love to hear if you agree, if you disagree, if there's any of these you haven't read and you think actually I might pick these up. Tell me down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I know considering... Um, the new release list for the rest of 2019 and how many books I've <laughs> pre-ordered and going to be absolutely broke for the rest of 2019. I don't care, it's all going to be worth it. That there are going to definitely be some strong challenges for my favourite books of the entire year. But so far, the standard is very, very high. My name is Olivia. This has been Stagey Bookish. Thank you for watching my video. Love you lots, guys. I'll see you in the next one.